if you have a biological cell, like a human uh, skin cell or whatever, any kind of cell, the more surface area that cell has, the more stuff can be transferred in and out of the cell. The more different processes can happen at once, the more heat can be exchanged, for instance. If we're talking about conduction, heat sinks work and radiators work by there being a high surface area to volume or mass ratio. Interestingly enough, the holographic principle by Gerard Tehuft, I think, says that the amount of information that is encapsulated in one volume of space-time is proportional to the surface area of that space-time rather than the volume itself. And uh, what makes that three times is interesting because the human brain, if you look at a topological, if you look at a, a three-dimensional map of the human brain, you will see that it is designed in such a way as to have the maximum possible surface area. That's why it's so incredibly fractally folded into itself. The human brain, the closer you get to the edge of it where there's the highest surface area possible there are a greater and greater density of serotonin receptor sites on the neurons especially things like uh, ht2a for example and uh, those sites are the same sites that the chemicals lsd and psilocybin attach to they are obviously related to higher consciousness, and it's well known that the outside layer of the brain is the one that is responsible for the most, the highest sort of perception and introspection and that type of stuff. Uh, just as a note to that, there's something called the, I believe it's the triune, it may, it try something, triune brain uh, hypothesis or model that well, is highly influential on anthropology, evolutionary, uh, human biology, as well as the whole neurological circuit. But it says that the brain basically evolved out of the brain stem and then had a, uh, a reptilian brain, a more bird-like brain, and then finally a mammal-like brain, and then a human-like brain. And it evolved concentrically out of the brainstem. The brainstem was just the original sort of internet of the living organism. The cerebellum, which is the very highly ridged part that's in the back of the brain, near the pons, I'm not sure if the pons are actually in the cerebellum. Pons has to do with the most archaic features of controlling things like sleep. The cerebellum kind of got pushed back by the newer by the newer brain that is nine times bigger than it probably but the cerebellum's in the back of the brain and that's why it's like a it, i think that's the reptilian brain basically it's just still there got pushed back is in the back surface area to volume it's got to be like super scientifically important something to do with space and time and information and energy and cognition and the rate at which things can pass through this sort of membrane barrier or interface. The interface sees more information happening through it if there's more surface area for that given volume and as long as that that surface area is is active in some sort of process which of course it would be otherwise, it probably wouldn't exist long, it would evolutionarily be destroyed, sort of, if it served no real uh, purpose that self, that self caused. And an interesting thing about fractals is that a fractal has an infinite surface area in a finite volume.